and uh, a short story should be set off with a quotation mark, uh, double quotation mark, op uh, op uh, opening double quotation mark, uh, close with the double quotation mark, right? Also, you have to use the American way. Uh, if, if there was a period, uh, period, and then closing quotation mark. Not closing quotation mark, period. That's wrong. Uh, it's not wrong, but uh, it's not an American way, right? And uh, indentation, right? Leave space uh, five or three spaces uh, in each paragraph. Begin with an indentation. And uh, uh, things like that. Uh, okay, uh, we are going to read the uh, uh, essays uh, written by you. You did the essay, and we are going we we are reading the essays first, and then we go to the story. Okay. Uh, Annabelle, I like your essay because. Uh, she uh, demonstrates what she feels while reading the story. Uh, the process of thinking shows in it. Uh, this is one way, right? At first she didn't like it, and then uh, she uh, came to like it. Right? Okay. Personally, I enjoyed reading the short story, The Man Who Could Walk Miracles by H.E. Wells. The first sentence is very good, right? Very natural. I must say that uh, in the beginning, I found it rather slow moving, and the language used was so different from what I'm used to uh, that it was quite hard to get into it. <laughs> but I like the language itself because we are accustomed to reading uh, Middle English and Old English and things like that. So it, it's, it feels like uh, modern language to us, <laughs> but to you maybe, it's uh, archaic, okay. The ending was something I hadn't been expecting, but made me uh, want to read on. Besides, you have to re read it, right? <laughs> uh, 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 especially the part where Mr. Fathering, 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 say, Fathering Day, was asked to stop the rotation of the Earth by Mr. Maydig, and eventually did so. From that point on, I was really drawn into the story and started enjoying it more. I find the story itself really interesting as well. It's interesting to see how Mr. Fathering Gay deals with his abilities and how his use of it changes over time. In my opinion, however, Mr. Fathering Gay was too easily influenced by what Mr. Maydig wanted. This can be seen by the fact that Mr. Maydig constantly puts aside the winch difficulty even though Mr. Father and Gay was, would like to see it resolved. Another example is the part where Mr. Mady convinces to stop the rotation of the Earth because time stops and it isn't as if they, they are doing any harm. Uh, without uh, thinking about the possible consequences, which I'm not sure were known uh, in the time the story is set, Mr. Father and Gay is persuaded to stop the no rotating all in all, as mentioned above, I really enjoyed reading the story, and I liked, I really liked it. Okay, in a, in a, okay. Kim Deon, Kim Deon, Hwasang Sil. Okay, good. She got a great book. Uh, summary. Uh, <coughs> he italicized the title, but uh, it should be. Uh, just uh, set up with quotation marks, right? The summary of the man who could walk miracles. The author, H.G. Wells, seems to have been written uh, Okay. It's wrong, okay? The author, H.G. Wells, seems to have written it, written it, with a mix of both fantasy and fiction. Within the story, it is possible to describe how the author is strongly influenced by art, for he writes about uniquely fantastic events that happen in daily life. In addition, he has the ability of maintaining the form and shape of his subtle way, uh, uh, subtitle, 
the way it is by focusing more on the, on the life event than the characters. Also, the characters in the story seem to have their minds filled with imaginative ideas which show the representational fantasy itself. In summary, this story convinces its readers that it's an artful product in the genre of fantasy and fiction that is not only fun, but also easy and delightful to read. I like the concluding sentence. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's quite natural and it's very, uh, in fact, I tend to like a shorter essay than longer one. Why? Because it's easier for me to uh, read. <laughs> it takes less time. But uh, if it's, it's, uh, I think it's uh, more difficult to do a short essay than a longer one, right? Uh, because the, if you fail to put down an idea in an impressive way, you get nothing. <laughs> so it's safe for you to uh, do a longer essay, but if you're competent, do a very short one, and a very, and it's, it's possible you get a, a superb, a grade of superb, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, Kim jae -un. Sarah Brown, she's not here. Uh, she got a great good. The man who could work miracles. I greatly enjoyed The Man Who Could Work Miracles by H.G. Wells. I found that the use of a simple protagonist made the themes of story more relatable. I love the use of a circular ending. Circular. It begins uh, uh, at the tavern and ends uh, at the tavern. Uh, as it plays with the common science fiction idea of parallel time, timelines, uh, there are also some interesting philosophical questions to ask after reading this story. Is there, maybe I is wrong, uh, is uh, you uh, used a semicolon, but uh, colon is right. Is there any, uh, is, is there such a thing as too much power if so, at what point is that threshold? If given excess power, how could a person use it and uh, what uh, everyone else could do to keep it as regulated as possible? H.G. E. Wells, the ever witty, sarcastic writer he is, brings about many interesting ideas and questions within this piece. Very compact. <coughs> he deals with the side of effect, right? This short story is very interesting. I think many people in reality have the same mentality as uh, Fotheringay. I think H.G. Wells did a good job showing how an average person who discovered they could will things to happen would act using their power for petty deeds. I looked into the idea about how stopping the Earth from spinning would cause absolute chaos. Uh, in this respect, we can see a story within a story as a novel structure, like a picture in a frame. Good, I like it. A picture in a picture. A picture in a picture. A story in a story. This narrative method reminds me of several Korean novels like The Climb of Nine. Kumo? No, I didn't read it, right? Did you read it? Kumo? Okay, good. Jang Sung-woo? Oh. Uh. The Man Who Could Work Miracles by H.G. Wells. The ending of The Man Who Could Work Miracles is exactly the same as the beginning, as the story is a pantoum in prose. Yeah, pantoum in prose. The subtitle. At the end of story, Fathengay works a particularly large miracle, commanding the earth to stop rotating without proper thinking about the constant course of action. The earth stops rotating, but <laughs> everything on its surface does not, uh, does not, and all life on earth is destroyed. Fothengay uh, uh, then realized the enormity of what was done as he is left alone, all alone, in the, in the scene of destruction and wills everything to go back to how it was before and for him to lose his powers. The story ends as it began with Fothung, 
Fatengay, Fatengay, sitting in the in the pub, arguing that miracles need to be willed, cannot just happen by themselves. This ending is clean cut, provides a definite explanation of what happens to the character. Nobody's hurt or killed, as everything just goes back to how it was before. I like it. I, I like it. I, I will change it to good. <laughs> right? Okay. The, the style, right? the essay, good. Chang Oh, yeah. Group four. Group four? Yeah. The story, the, the man who could work miracles, put it in, uh, <coughs> set it off with a quotation mark instead of italicizing it. The story, the man who could work miracles is a powerful warning against the impact that humans can have on the environment. So are you an environmentalist? Hmm? Like me? <laughs> OK. H.G. E. Wells conveys the message by showing how Fothering Gay makes absurd mistakes with his miraculous ability. He sends a constable to Hayes, uh, repents his deed, Later, despite the help of Mr. Mady, the clergyman, clergyman. Fortune Gay's first warning of the earth into a disaster. Finally, he wishes that the power be taken from him, and then makes his last wish to go back to the time when he did not have the magical power. It should be a good thing if humans have the full capability to sa satisfy their desires, but H.G. E. Wells predicts that it can be dangerous as well. I, I, like, I like this idea, right? Uh, like uh, AI, hmm? right? What will happen in the end? We'll be slaves to machines. Hmm? Don't you think so? Uh, machines, uh, humanoids will have the power. They, they, they have uh, feelings and, and judgments. They think by themselves. And they will consider humans uh, weaklings inferior to them, and they will make us slaves. Well, don't you think so? So you, you do not want to be slaves to machines, right? So how could you do, uh, outdo them? I will tell you. How could you outdo them? How could, you, could, could, uh, could we win them? Luis? Oh, like you, like you. <laughs> you showed the model, you are the model. Be creative. <laughs> Be creative. Of course, there, there is a, uh, a robot who can uh, write a uh, novel, fiction, but they can put the, the best part into one story, and it becomes a horrible story. <laughs> right? But uh, human, uh, uh, man is different, right? Although he wrote this science fiction in 1989. 1989? 18, 1899, eh? Oh, 1989, you're right. Yeah. He is predicting the future science, such as uh, the nuclear power, which um, uh, recreated uh, what Wells wrote. His prediction can be extended to the destruction of the atomic bomb or even the artificial intelligence, AI. While the development of science and technology can offer humans a lot of advantage, we should never forget the dark side. Even a minor mistake can lead into a calamity. Chang Jia, so you, you are against uh, developing uh, <coughs> IAs further? No? You could, you could uh, create a lot of good things, uh, like uh, uh, automobile, car, right? Ordinary car has the power of 100, 200 horses power, right? Very powerful. So it's, it's just a uh, means for us to use, right? But uh, AI, I don't know, I'm not sure. Probably will be, they're slaves. Uh, uh, that's, that's must the end to the, the civilization Earth, right? And Luis Vaquez, uh, this is very carefully written and very good, probably the best one. 
Okay, I'll read it slowly. H.G. Uh, e. Wells questioned having omnipotence and the man who could work miracles. He begins the tale by introducing the main character, George McWhorter, fourth and gay, as a skeptic who doesn't believe in miracles. Very good beginning. Right? Right? He is a non-believer. Emphasis, right? He repeated uh, in one short sentence. He goes, out, he goes as far to say that he knows the miracles are so impossible he can command the lamp to flip over that, that it won't. Right? But much to his astonishment, it flips over. Then he is bewildered. Very good. Right. The, the, the code is very he, but the rest of the individuals in the, in the bar believe it to be a trick and kick him out of the bar. Oh, very interesting, right? Int very uh, embarrassing situation. Then, the next day, he leaves work uh, easily to go uh, to a nearby park to practice miracles. He makes a dab tree, sprout flowers out of season, but soon he hears the constable, so he tries to tell the tree to return to his form. Oh, uh, mis new mistake. I T S I apostrophe instead of uh, apostrophe, I T S, right? Uh, it's former state, but instead, it misunderstands his wording and flies away in the direction of the constable. After hitting the constable, he doesn't know what to say, so he tells him he was performing miracles. <laughs> then, the constable doesn't believe him, so he sends him to hell, Hayes, right, hell, and leaves the scene. But shortly after he sends him to San Francisco, uh, later he meets uh, Maydig, the clergyman of town, and tells him about the miracle, and um, uh, if he, uh, okay, the clergyman says if he could, uh, if he, could uh, pause the time, he could save the whole world. Let me see. Later, he meets Mehdi, the clergyman of town, and tells him about the miracles and performs some innate miracles. Then, the clergyman says, if he could pause the time, he could save the whole world. So, Father and Gay tries to pause the world, but instead he messes up, and the world and fate misinterpret his wording and the world immediately stopped turning and sends everything flying off the surface of the globe, including Fourth and Gay, until he wishes to be placed back on the surface, safe and sound. After being placed back down, he realizes his mistake and looks for Medic for a while to no avail. Then he finally wished to go back to the tavern where he was arguing about miracles and to not have his power and to not remember anything. So, in a second, he is sent back in time to the tavern, not remembering anything and still arguing about not believing in miracles. So, H.G. E. Wells, obviously, is not a fan of being able to have your heart's desires or your every wish. He believes in having a balance of right and wrong. In a way, this reminds me of Time Machine because he teleports back in time to the past and wants to read himself of how to perform miracles and let life take its natural course. Very good, right? Uh, thinking, right? Thinking deeply. Well, <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, we are going to read the story itself. No uh, abstract, right? no summary is better than the original. Right? So let's, uh, the story is quite long, so we are going to read uh, the whole story, skipping here and there. Okay? Let's go back to the story. Okay, uh, today is Wednesday, and uh, you have weekend, Saturday and Sunday, so I'll give you a long assignment, uh, 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 which is to uh, read uh, Frankenstein's 
the book consists of three books, I think, three books. And uh, so we are going to finish it uh, one and a half week. Uh, Frankenstein by Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley. Uh, it's a very interesting story, very well written, very popular. Uh, finished the whole thing, the first, first book, right? One third of this book, and do an essay, one page, no more than two pages, one page long summary or abstract of the story, and uh, I hope you'll enjoy it. It's, it's quite interesting. And you can get the uh, uh, handout at the, uh, in the uh, basement, in the basement, right? And I don't know, it's about uh, Yukchonon. So we are going to finish this uh, story, Frankenstein's, uh, uh, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. And D.H. Uh, Lawrence's uh, uh, story, best story. And that book is also available. So, and probably I will, I will read another one, Brave New World, and the three, three uh, long stories, and then uh, a lot of short stories, right? Uh, hmm? Yeah, first book. Just the first. Just first, yeah. Do you want another one? Another, another, <laughs> another? <laughs> if you want, I can give another assignment, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you are doing, you enjoy doing assignments, right? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, let's go, go back to H.G. Uh, Wells, The Man Who Could Work, uh, work Miracles. The subtitle, Pontoon in Prose. Uh, I don't know the, the, the music style, but uh, uh, it, it, uh, it's the, <coughs> hints the uh, structure of the novel, right? Uh, it is doubtful. It is doubtful whether the gift was innate. Very good beginning. When you do a story, short story, the first sentence sets the mood, uh, the, the whole story in one line, and uh, a novelist spends a whole day, a whole week, or a whole month to begin with the story. So the first sentence is very important. And also the closing, let's go to the last of the story, how it and It must be a very short one, I think. Maybe, I don't know. Look here, Mr. Van, uh, oh, uh, it's something contrary-wise to the course of nature done by the power of will. Very good. This summary is uh, actually the the summary is the summary of the story. Okay. <clears throat> you don't have magical power, miracles, or things like that. The gift, the gift, right? Mm. The gift. It is doubtful whether the gift was innate. For my own part, I think it came to him suddenly. The, the speaker, what? Omniscient. He is like God, he knows everything, and he tells his story. Omnipresent. The, the speaker is omnipresent everywhere in the story. Uh, and he was, uh, indeed, until he was 30, he was a skeptic and did not believe in. So how old is he now? He's just 30, right? Uh, and here, since it is the most convenient place. I must mention, uh, he was a little man, had eyes of hot brown, very erect red hair, a mustache with ends that he twitched up, and freckles, freckles. It looks like what? It looks like a uh, uh, painter, Dolly, right? <laughs> very, very strange guy. His name was George. Magwita Fathringe. Uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a name, there is meaning. In, in, in the story, the, the names of characters are very important, right? So, uh, not the sort of man by any means to lead to an expectation of miracles that 
he was a cleric at uh, Kamchatsk. He was greatly addicted to assertive argument. It was while he was asserting the impossibility of miracles that he had his first imp intimation of your extra extra extraordinary powers. This particular argument is being held in the bar of Long Dragon. Long Dragon. The, the name of the bar. I like it. Long Dragon. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and Toddy Beamish. Toddy Beamish was conducting the opposition by a monotonous but effective, so you say, that drove Mr. Fothingly to the very limit of his patience. Can you change the first paragraph in, in other way, in any other way? You can out, out, outdo him, right? But uh, hardly, hardly for you, right? Except... Uh, you. <laughs> okay, why don't you uh, redo it, the introduction, in addition to the uh, <laughs> summary of the marriage. marriage uh -huh. the, okay. There were present besides these two, a very dusty cyclist, very uh, a dusty cyclist, uh, Landrod Cox and Miss Maybridge, the perfectly respectable and rather portly barmaid of the dragon. Oh, so. Uh, Maybridge must be important, right? Uh, right. So, uh, with the opposition, right? The phrase, the perfectly respectable, rather portly barmaid of the dragon, May Miss Maybridge, right? Miss Maybridge was standing with her back to Mr. Fothing, uh, Fotheringay. So, this uh, this posture is also important, right? He, she's standing uh, uh, against him, right? So it's what? Like a movie, right? Uh, it's a scene, right? You are director and how uh, you would put you know, which character uh, where, right? This is very important, right? So, uh, washing glasses. The others are watching him, more or less amused by the present ineffectiveness of the assertive method, goaded uh, by the Taurus Vedras tactics of Mr. Beamish, Mr. Fothingay, determined to make an unusual rhetorical effort. Look here, Mr. Beamish, said Mr. Fothingay. Let us just clearly understand what a miracle is. It's something contrary, contrary wise to the course of nature done by the power of will. Something that couldn't happen without being especially will. This one, this, this uh, first phrase, uh, actually sentence, is repeated at the end. And uh, with all, with the, within a uh, 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 quotation marks, this is pantun, right? In prose, pantun, right? Rep repetition. So you say, uh, said Mr. Beamish, repulsing him. Mr. Fathingly Gay appealed to the cyclist, who had hitherto been silent, auditor, and received his hand, given with a hesitating cough and the glance of Mr. Beamish, the land road would express no opinion, and Mr. Fothingly Gay returned to Mr. Beamish, received the unexpected concession of qualified assent to his definition of miracle. For instance, said Mr. Fothingly Gay, greatly encouraged, here would be a miracle. That lamp in a natural course of nature couldn't burn like an uh, upside, upside down, upside down, upside down. Could it, Beamish? You say it couldn't, said Beamish. And you, said the fourth one, Jay, you don't mean to say, oh, <laughs> the miracle. <laughs> I like it, yeah? You, you don't mean to say, and a dash, very effective dash, and oh, oh, what happened? <laughs> Miracles, right? <laughs> so it's like what? Well, it's it's uh, good. No, <coughs> said Beamish reluctantly, no, it couldn't. Something's happening, right? It couldn't. Very well, said Mr. Fothing, Fothing Gay. Then here comes some, uh, someone, someone as, it, as it might be me, uh, along here, and stands as it might be here, says to the lamp, uh, as he might do, collecting all my will, turn upside down without breaking, go on burning steady. 
and hello, it was enough to make anyone say hello. The impossible, in, the incredible was visible to them all. The lamp hung inverted upside down in the air, burning quietly with this flame pointing down. It is impossible, right? <laughs> but it's a, it's a fiction, right? It was as solid, as incredible as ever a lamp was, the prosaic common lamp of the dragon, uh, long dragon this kind of uh, lamp all of all, all the rooms right but um, he used the project right in, uh, uh, in contrast to the miraculous lamp right mr F uh, fatheringay stood with an extended the forefing forefinger and the uh, needed brows of an ant of one anticipating a catastrophic smash. The cyclist who was sitting next to the lamp ducked and jumped across the bar. Everybody jumped, more or less. Miss Maybury turned and screamed for nearly three seconds. The lamp remained still. A faint cry of mental distress came from Mr. Fotheringay. I can't keep it up, he said, any longer. He staggered back, and the inverted lamp suddenly flared, fell against the corner of the bar bounced aside, smashed upon the floor, and went out. Very dramatic, right? Very dramatic. But it was lucky it had a mental receiver, or the whole place would have been in a place. Mr. Cox was the first to speak, and his remark, shown of needless uh, excrescence, was to the, the fact that uh, Fotheringay was a fool. Fotheringay was beyond disputing, even so fundamental a proposition at that, as that. He was astonished beyond measure at the thing that had occurred. The subsequent conversation threw absolutely no light on the matter so far as Fotheringay was concerned. General opinion, general opinion, not only followed Mr. Cox very closely, but very vehemently. Everyone accused Fotheringay of a silly trick, trick, not miracle. A miracle. People, uh, he performed the miracle. Nobody believes it is miracle. Perform. So it's a trick, bright ma magic, right? And present him to himself as a foolish destroyer of comfort and security. His mind was a tornado of perplexity. He was himself inclined to agree with them, and he made a remarkably ineffectual opposition to the proposal of his departure. He went home, flushed, and he did. Coat color crumpled, eyes smarting, and ears red. So he he's very excited, embarrassed. Right? He watched each of the ten street lamps nervously as he passed it. It was only when he found himself alone in his little uh, little uh, bedroom in Church Row. Uh, where uh, does he live? Church Row. He lives in Church Row, right? Church. Hmm. Uh, that he was able to grapple seriously with his memories of the occurrence and asked, what on earth happened? He had removed his coat and boots and was sitting on the bed with his hands in his pocket, repeating the text of his uh, defense of the seventh, seventh, seventeenth time. I didn't want the confounded thing to upset. When it occurred to him that uh, at the precise moment he had said some, the commanding words he had inadvertently willed and the thing he said, and that when he had seen the lamp in the air, he had felt that it depended on him to maintain it there without being clear how this was to be done. He had not a partic peculiarly, particularly complex mind, or he might, might have struck, stuck for a time at that inadvertently willed, embracing as it does, the abstrusist problems, abstrusist uh, problems of a voluntary action, but as it was, the idea came to him with a quite acceptable hastiness. And from that, following, as I must admit, no clear logical path, he came to the test of experiment. So experiment. He pointed resolutely to his candle and collected his mind, though he felt he did the foolish thing. Be raised up, he said. But in a second, that feeling vanished. The candle was raised, hung in the air, one giddy moment, uh, and as Mr. F uh, Fotheringay grasped, fell with a smash on his toilet table, leaving him in darkness, save 
for the expiring law of his week. For a time, Mr. Fothingay Fothing, Fothing sat in the darkness, perfectly still. It did happen, after all, he said. And how I'm to explain it, I don't know. He sighed heavily and began feeling in his pocket for a match. He could find none, and he rose and groped about the toilet table. I wish I had a match, he said. He resorted to his coat, and there were none there. And then it dawned up upon him that uh, miracles were possible, even with matches. He extended a hand and sh uh, scowled at it uh, in, uh, in the dark. Let there be a match in that hand, he said. He felt some light object fall across his palm, and his fingers closed, closed upon a match. After several ineffectual attempts to light this, he discovered it was a safety match. He threw it down. And then it occurred to him that he might have willed it lit. He did, and perceived it burning in the midst of his toilet table mat. He caught it up hastily, and it went out. His perception of possibilities enlarged, and he felt for and replaced the candle in his candlestick. Here you be lit, said Mr. Uh, uh, Fartengay, and uh, forthwith the candle was flaring, and he saw a little black hole in the total cover with a wisp of smoke rising from it. For a time, he stared from this to the little frame and back, and then looked up and met his own gaze in the looking glass. By this help, he commanded, communed with himself in silence for a time. How about miracles now, said Mr. Fothingay at last, addressing his reflection. The subsequent meditation of Mr. Fothingay was, were all of severe but confused description. So far as he could see, it was a case of pure willing with him. The nature of his first experiences dis disclined him for any further experiments, except of the most cautious type. But he lifted the sheet of paper and turned the glass water pink, then green, and he, he created the snail, which he miraculously uh, annihilated, got himself a miraculous new toothbrush. Uh, someone, this is not a typo, Someone, some man means some, some time. Some, someone in the small hours, he had reached the fact that his willpower must be of a particular, particularly rare and pungent quality, a fact of which he had certainly had uh, inklings before, uh, but no certain assurance. The scare and the perplexity of his first discovery were now qualified by pride and this evidence of singularity and the vague limit intimations of advantage. He became aware that church clock was striking one, and it did not occur to him that his daily duties at the Gomshas might be miraculously dispensed with. He resumed undressing in order to get to bed without further delay. As he struggled to get his shirt over his head, he was struck with, uh, with a brilliant idea. Uh, let me be in bed, he said, and he found himself so undressed, he stipulated, and finding the sheets cold, uh, added hastily, and in my nice shirt, no, in a nice soft woolen nice shirt. Ah, he said with immense enjoyment, and now let me be comfortably asleep. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so he is able to perform miraculous things. Uh, Okay, page uh, 448, concluding part, okay. Second uh, paragraph. You see, when Mr. Fothingay had rushed the rotation of the solid globe, he had made no stipulation concerning the trifling movables upon the surface, and the earth spins so fast that the surface at its equator is traveling at rather more than a thousand miles an hour, and in these latitudes at more than half the space, so that the village and Mr. Maydig and Mr. Fothing, uh, F uh, Fothing and Gay and everybody and everything had been jerked violently forward at about nine miles per second, that is to say, much more violent than if they had been fired out of a cannon. 
And every human being, every living creature, every house and every tree, all the world as we know it had been so jerked and smashed and utterly destroyed. That was all. So this is an, ima an Im imagination. Uh, these things, Mr. Fothingly did not, of course, fully appreciate. But he perceived that his miracle had miscarried. And uh, with that, a great dis uh, disgust of miracles came upon him. He was in darkness now, for the clouds had swept together, and blood was a momentary glimpse of the moon, and, and the air was uh, full of fitful, struggling, tortured wraith of hail. A great roaring of wind and waters filled earth and sky, and peering under his, his hand through the dust and sleet to windward, he saw by the play of the lightnings a vast wall of water pouring towards him. Maybe, exclaimed Mr. Fothingley's field voice amid the element, elemental roar, here, Maybe, stop, cried Mr. Uh, Fothingley to the advancing water. Oh, for goodness sake, stop. Just a moment, uh, said Mr. Fothingley uh, to, to the lightnings and thunder. Stop just a moment while I collect my thoughts and now what shall I do, he said. What shall I do, Lord? I wish Maydig was about. I know, said Mr. Fothingay. And for goodness sake, let's have it right this time. He remained on all fours, leaning against the wind, very intent to have everything right. But he said, I'm going to... He lifted his voice against the whirlwind. Now then, here goes. Mind about, uh, mind about, about that, what I said just now. In the first place, when all I've got to say is done, let me lose my miracle power, let my will become just like anybody else's will, and all these dangerous miracles be stopped. I don't like them. I'd rather I, uh, I didn't work them ever so much. That's the first thing. And, then, and the second is, let me be back just before the miracles began. Let everything be just as it was before uh, that blessed lamb turned up. It's a big job, but it's the last. Have you got it? No more miracles. Everything as it was. Me back in the long dragon just before I drank my half pint. That's it, yes. He dug his four fingers into the mold, closed his eye, said, off. Everything became perfectly still. He perceived that he was standing erect. So you say, <laughs> so, uh, said the voice. He opened his eyes. He was in the power of the long dragon, arguing about miracles with Toddy Beamish. He had a vague sense of some great thing forgotten that instantaneously passed. You see, except for the loss of his miraculous power, Everything was bad as it had been. His mind and memory, uh, therefore, were now just as they had been at the time when this story began, so that he knew absolutely nothing of all that is told here, knows nothing of all that is told here to this day. And among other things, of course, he still did not believe in miracles. I tell you that miracles, pro properly speaking, can't happen. Whatever you like to, to hold, and I'm prepared to prove it up to the hilt. That's what you think, said Tara Beamish. Prove it if you can. Look here, Mr. Beamish, said Mr. Fothing, uh, Fothling Gay. Let us, be, let us clearly understand what a miracle is. It's something contrary wise to the course of nature done by power of will. Uh, the structure is a type, type three, uh, it's tight structure, right? Tight training structure. It's a tight training structure. Very good story. I have to. Uh, uh, okay. I'd like to. I, I'd like to conceal your name, but still, why do we have to conceal uh, uh, the the name when uh, I'm I'm going to say something good about it, right? So, uh, Annabelle Stahl, wonderful. You you got the grade good. Uh, I, I, I had wanted to make a photocopy of this, but uh, that's, that's not good, right? So, so I refrained from making photocopies. 
uh, I hardly corrected anything. Uh, and uh, there is one mistake. I have to point, point, point to it. The title should be right, capitalized, summary, lowercase, right? This is summary. Okay. And uh, this is extremely good, right? Probably the, the Wikipedia article is horrible because it's co-authored by uh, hundreds of thousands of people. So it's, it's a uh, mixture of uh, everything. So it's, sometimes it's good, but the content's good, but uh, it's horrible. Uh, the WB Yeats summary. William Butler Yeats was born on June 13, 1865 to John Butler Yeats and Susan Pollockson in Sandy Mount Dublin, Ireland. Good beginning, right? Some of you used a preposition in. That's wrong. Uh, he was born in December. Or, or if you uh, give the date, he was born on December 10th, 1920. Uh, right there, right? Or he was born on uh, 12th December 1920, things like that. So you have to, so if you uh, go to the elements of Tao, they will tell you right, how to express the day, when's, uh, date, date of the week and uh, month, uh, things like that. So proposition on, right, not in. Yeats is an art poet and is also known to be a notable figure of 20th century literature. Besides being such a big literary figure for the Irish literature, he also served as an Irish senator for two years. It can be seen that Yeats is a big literary figure by the fact that he received the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1923. When the Yeats family moved to London, William resumed his studies there only to finish his studies in Dublin when he eventually moved back. Yeats was uh, 17 when writing his first known works. He published a lot of great works through, throughout the years of his life. Not that logic. Right? So you don't need the years of his life, throughout his life. Including A Vision. A Vision is not an article. It's a book title, so it should be italicized. A Vision. Okay. Uh, in his later year, Yeats became desperate to marry and get an heir and was rejected by multiple women, I don't think so, later on, uh, two women actually. So, rejected by uh, the two women he proposed to. In the end, he married George and Lise and they had two children. Later on in his life, it is said that he found energy from his poetry and the intimate relations he was, was in with the younger women, that's true. Based on reading his biography page, it can be concluded that Yeats is, is and will forever be known as one of the most noble figures of 20th century literature. Good. Okay. And Sarah Brown, the man who could work miracles. I like it. I like it. I like it. I generally enjoy the, the Man Who Could Work Miracles by H.G. E. Wells. I found that the use of a simple protagonist made the themes of the story more relatable. I love the use of a circular ending as it plays with a common science fiction idea of parallel timelines. There are also some interesting philosophical questions to ask after reading this story. Is there such a thing as a too much power? If so, at what point is that a threshold? If given excess power, how could a person use it? And what could, what uh, everyone, everyone, else, what everyone else could do to keep it as regular as possible? G.H. Wells, the ever witty and sarcastic writer he is, brings about many ideas and questions within this piece. Okay? Chang uh, This is summary. This is good. Uh, it's slightly different from uh, 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 yours, but uh, it's also interesting. William Butler was born at Dublin Island on June 13th, 1865. Uh, he was the son of a well-known Irish painter, John Butler Yeats. Oh, no connector here, right? You need, uh, you need the period here or semicolon. Right? She spent childhood in County Sligo and in London, 
In mid-1880s, Yeats continued his education and started painting, but quickly discovered he preferred He soon abandoned art school for other pursuits. After returning to London in the late 1880s, Yeats founded the Rymer's Club Poetry Club group. He also joined the Order of the Golden Dawn, an organization that explored topics related to the uh, occult and mysticism. Around this time, he also became acquainted with Maud Gaughan, a supporter of Irish independence. This revolutionary woman served as a muse for Yeats for years and remained a powerful figure in Yeats's poetry. In addition to his poetry, Yeats devoted significant creative energy to writing plays. He established the Irish Literary Theater with playwright Lady Gregory, who works for the Irish Age. His work at 1910 was strongly influenced by Ezra Pound, becoming more modern in his concision and imagery, but Yeats never abandoned the strict adherence to traditional verse. First forms. Yeats then became a political figure in the new Irish Free State, serving as a senator. The following year, he received the Nobel Prize in Literature as one of the greatest uh, poets of the century. Yeats was selected for his always inspired poetry, which, in a highly artistic form, gives expression to the spirit of the whole nation. Yeats continued to write until his death and passed away on January 8, 1939, in Loch Green, Cap Martin, France. Very good summary. Did you copy it from somewhere? No? <laughs> good, very good, perfect. So, the raw material, the, actually the, uh, the uh, Wikipedia material is uh, crude, very crude, right? It's a uh, mixture of a lot of things and uh, he refined it. Good. And uh, Kim Yisoo? Summary, this is good, okay, listen. W.B.H. is considered one of the main Irish poets of the 20th century who was awarded Nobel Prize in Literature as the first Irishman, Irishman in 1923. The works of Yeats uh, form a bridge between the romantic poetry of the 19th century and the hard, clear language of modern poetry. Yeats was born June 13, 1865, in Dublin, Ireland. In his young age, his personal philosophy was a blend of athleticism believed that art and beauty are important for everything. At the age of 19, he was enrolled in the Metropolitan School of Art in Dublin, intending to become a painter. In 1887, however, he becomes a literary correspondent for two American newspapers to survive, right, to make a living. Among his acquaintances at this time were his writer friends, including William Morris, George Bernard Shaw, Oscar Wilde. In 1889, he missed the woman who became the greatest in single influence on his life, and poetry, Maud Gaughan. Very good, I like this sentence. Yeats's first and deepest love, very good. Uh, instead of a semicolon, use colon. Okay, use colon here. Okay. Uh, uh, she admired his poetry but rejected his repeated offers of marriage. Good, very good uh, phrasing. Choosing instead to marry, Major John McBride. He H proposed again after the death of Moe's husband, but she again turns him down. Good. Yeats' experience with the theater gave to his volume of poems in the Seven Woods. A new style, less elaborate, less romantic, and more straightforward in language and imagery. After receiving the Nobel Prize, his acceptance of the role and his responsibility has been foreshadowed in his poems, Responsibilities. The outbreak of civil war in Ireland, 1922, had heightened his conviction that the artist must lead, might lead, must lead the way through art to a harmonious ordering of chaos. Yeats was not only one of the greatest poets and major figure in the Irish Renaissance, but also wrote some of the greatest of the 20th century literature. Good. Did you copy it from somewhere? No? <laughs> good. Too good to be true, huh? Uh, Luis Vaquez. And... Uh, Pakchini, okay. Uh, Pak Tongu, okay. Uh, Pak Tongu, Pianjuan, and uh, Chang Jiyan. Chang Jiyan, too short, right? <laughs> che, che Jiyun, and uh, Kim Jiyun. Uh, okay. Uh, Take yours, huh? 
Now, uh, why don't we go back to the story? Okay, H.G. Wells. Uh, Okay, discussions on uh, the man who could work miracles. Uh, do you know the concept of the uh, suspension of disbelief? It's, it's a literary term. Uh, Coolidge is the, probably the first uh, critic in English literature, first critic. And uh, one of the key concepts uh, offered by him is disbelief of Suspension of disbelief, right? When you enjoy a movie, if you stick to facts, it's boring, right? So, so uh, literature deals with what might happen, right? History deals with what has happened. Science with what might happen, in the same way as literature. But uh, in science, you must have an imagination, but uh, you have to solve the question. You have to find out practical solution to what you think, what you imagine. So it, it's, it's different. It's different. It's slightly different. Okay, the plot. Plot is what? Pontoon, right? So uh, this, con this concept is repeated uh, in the whole structure. It begins uh, in a bar and ends in a bar, but also uh, it begins with the, uh, uh, the, uh, the main character's uh, disbelief in, uh, in uh, what? Uh, miracles, working miracles. And then disbelief with the uh, same, same, same belief. He ends with the same belief. Right? So it's a pontoon repetition. Right? So so uh, this phrase, uh, this sentence is exactly repeated at the end of the story. Look here, look here, Mr. Beamish, uh, said uh, Mr. Fathinge. Let us clearly understand what a miracle is. It's something contrary-wise to the course of nature done by will of power, and then he, uh, he, he works a miracle in spite of, in spite of himself, right? Does the story end here, or is it to go on forever, as in the theory of the soul or the cycles of civilization? Uh, it's interesting. One of you, one of you at least, I don't know who, said that the story will repeat forever. <laughs> right? Very good uh, observation. Who, who did? One of you said that. Who, who said it? Who? You don't remember what you said, right? One of you in your essay said, the story will repeat forever, something like that. I think so, right? He is going to perform the miracle again, right? I don't know, he uh, has the uh, power or not. He must have, lo he must have lost the power, but uh, you don't know, right? Right, anyway. And uh, the person in the story, George uh, uh, McWhorter Fotheringay, Fotheringay. What do you think of the, uh, uh, the uh, name of the uh, hero? It is quite uh, ordinary. Fothering, Fothering, Fotheringay, Fotheringay, Father. Father, Fothering, Fothering, Fothering. So, uh, in the name, there is something here, right? But what do you think? George Mavorta Fothringi. And uh, there appears Cox, Miss Maybridge, Miss Beamish, Gomshot, the owner of the office, right? Where uh, Fothringi works, Winch, the constable, and Mr. Maydick, the, the minister, and, and uh, Mrs. Minchin, Minchin. 
So mention, what do you think? Mention. She munches. Yeah? There is a funny, funny, funny phrase uh, in, in the novel, in the, in the short story. Father and Gay uh, uh, works a miracle. He, he creates a rabbit. He, he eats it, right? Finish one and uh, creates another one. And <laughs> so, chum chum, chum chum. <laughs> Think, uh, did you, did you, do you remember, right? Mm. And uh, place of story, the long dragon, uh, expression not usual. The Taurus Vedras tactics. What is it? Taurus, Luis, Taurus Vedras tactics, have you heard of it? It's, uh, it's a it's a place name in uh, Portugal, and uh, uh, there there is there is a village called uh, Torres Vedras. But uh, in the uh, Wikipedia, I don't find anything but uh, uh, military tactics of uh, annihilation, or something like that. So uh, uh, doing everything he, he can he can do things like that, right? So. The Taurus bad rush tactics. Upsy, upsy down, upside down, maybe. Some when, some, sometime. Right? Sometime. Sometime next week or sometime. Uh, uh, Thomer, thaumaturgist, what does it mean? I saw it for the first time. Magician, right? Uh, Rodian Arch of Shadow, Rodian? I don't know what, what does it mean. Rodian, Rodian Arch. Rodian, what does it mean? Rodian Arch. And my, my, I don't know what, it, pronunciation, right? Amer the, the maybe a British accent, mightily, mightily, or something like. I don't know. I get, I can get, chum chum, right? The 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 uh, the action, act, the act of chewing, right? Eating, Welsh rabbit, actually rabbit, Welsh rabbit, post prandial, after eating, or things like that. So. Uh, okay, <coughs> if you read the uh, novel, there are a story, short story, you, you see uh, some uh, scientific facts have been used, utilized, right? Uh, for example, gravitation, o okay, also time, right? Uh, and uh, uh, rotation of the earth, of course, friction, interesting. Uh, the story was written before uh, we uh, landed on the moon, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, friction, friction, right? Uh, uh, so friction. Uh, uh, use of alchemy and things like that. Uh, okay. Literary feats. Pontoon structure, uh, characters and their names, uh, repetition in dialogues, funny aspects. Go to Hayes, go. He, he got angry. Actually, he, he, did not, uh, he did not want to, he did not, he does not want to send him. Did not want to send him <coughs> to Hayes, right? But, but he got angry and it's just a uh, curse, right? <laughs> and then it's realized, right? Interesting, right? Go to Hayes, go now. And then he disappeared, right? The main character, Mr. Fathengay's way of life or thinking as cleric, and very humane. He's, he's like a man, petty man, right? He's not a b bad guy, right? Very conscientious, right? He sent him to ha Hayes, hell, and then he's worried about him. Oh, I'd like to uh, get him to uh, San Francisco. He, he does not know <laughs> where San Francisco is, right? But also, uh, the scene of helping himself to a second Welsh rabbit out of vacancy, right? Okay, uh, I'd like to ask this question. What is the implication of uh, this story for, for us uh, and for the uh, 21st scientist, 21st century scientists? Actually, we have just created uh, artificial life, artificial life. And it's like uh, a ball, very small one. That means what? You create life out of nothing, like, like this magic. 
and I'm worried about it. Right? Eventually, all of us will disappear, right? <laughs> the, the sun is what? Middle-aged. Will disappear eventually, right? Uh, and uh, collapse. <laughs> eventually, but uh, this moment is important, important right? Uh, we, are, we are all of uh, ambitions, desires, right? We have greed and things like that. But despite that, we all of us are uh, very good, right? And uh, last night I drove my car and uh, I, I live about 50 kilometers away and uh, in the evening, there is hardly any traffic I can run at the speed of 120 kilom kilometers. And I suddenly saw something white, and then there was a road kill, white one. I avoided it in spite of myself, right? So I'm, I'm good, right, like you. <laughs> not, not bad, right? So that's human, right? That's human, right? We have uh, full of greed, ambitions, and uh, uh, all kinds of desires, but uh, we, are, we are very good. Right? So, uh, the character, the main character, seems to be uh, represent, uh, seems to represent all of us. Right? He is worried about his work the next morning. So, he, he wants to stop the rotation of the earth because of that. Right? Mr. Medica suggested, of course, but uh, very interesting, right? Mm. So AI, artificial organism, human noise, uh, uh, depletion of energy, killing of plants and animals, building water and air, earth, ocean. Where are we heading? <laughs> like uh, still, like uh, Mr. Uh, this, this character, we don't know. Right? We are making blunders. We make the same mistakes over and over, over again and then will perish from the, from, the, uh, from the surface of Earth. That's, that's very human. To Earth is human, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, <coughs> uh, let's see. Uh, uh, why don't you uh, we, uh, go to your group? group uh, there are four groups. And talk about the Literally marriage, the literary marriage of the story. What is good? What is the most impressive part in the story? And you have a discussion, and uh, uh, each group will uh, represent. Uh, uh, one of your, one of you in each group will talk about the uh, the uh, good thing about this work, and I'll listen. I enjoy listening to you. Okay, let's go to group one, two, three, four. Okay.